computer. Where is that handsome Dr. Rick Tremilios? <laughs> okay, good. I was on a call with 90 med students last week and they all had their black screen with their names. And I said, look, I did not come to talk to screens. <laughs> so I, I told them, show your faces. And about half of them did. And I realized, you know, we, we get into this habit of like doing 18 other things. And I just went, oh, no, 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 no. So I think it's really great to see people, I have to say. So. Okay. Especially everybody who I'm seeing here. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Except for Eric Chang. He's now hiding behind the East West Center logo. <laughs> Hi, Pat Rick. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see everybody here. So many familiar faces. Aloha, everybody. So I think we're going to go ahead and get started. It's, okay. Yeah, this is great. So um, I think I know almost everybody in the room, but my name's Annie Reynolds, and I'm the current curator at the East West Center Gallery. So I know many of you um, have also worked before either with Benji, uh, who was the first curator uh, at the East West Center Gallery or with Michael Schuster, who was the curator up until April uh, of last year. So we've had this kind of big transition during, during this time. So happy to be joining you here um, with our arts program team. So our current arts program team is myself and Eric Chang is the arts program coordinator and he's high, there he is. <laughs> and uh, Navahine Lanzalati is our uh, assistant and education coordinator who's not able to join us today. And Marina George, who's the current uh, student uh, assistant as well. So that's our current team that's, you know, we're doing our best to manage to keep our programming continuing forward during all of this challenging time. And, and this project, the Kumu project has really kind of come out of that um, in Think, you know, looking back at what our program has done, how we've done it, um, and kind of figuring out what we can do during this time too. Um, and a part of that is really wanting to really re-engage um, with people. You know, we have such an incredible, there's such an incredible history in this organization. And I feel like I'm just kind of following in the, the footsteps of, of all that history that I'm still, still learning about. Um, um, and this incredible network of people who've been through this, this organization, um, it's, really, it's really an honor. And so this project is a way of honoring that. We've, we've, brought, uh, we've been collaborating with uh, Kumu Meliana Meyer, who is uh, an incredible artist and educator and cultural, <laughs> cultural resource and working with her to develop this project idea. And um, we really do feel that it's a simple, beautiful project, but it's very deep and very meaningful. And so the more we can bring more people into it, the more meaningful it will be. And it's a way of reflecting back to where the center has been, where we are now, this capturing what's happening now to all of us that's really, in a way, unifying us, bringing us together in, in our um, in our current situation that we're in and imagining what life is going to be after this time. And so with that, um, we've also been working with Leana and the current, some of the current East West Center students who are also working on their project, which is more of a publication. And all of these projects, both of these projects are really interwoven and we'll continue to interweave them forward, um, but really wanting to, to reconnect with people in a meaningful way now, wanting to capture what people are going through at this time. Um, and so our projects kind of together um, can just uh, just build each other exponentially. And so it's incredible to have all of you here. This is our pilot, our pilot workshop, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, it's incredible to see, see new faces, familiar names, but people who I have never met, had the opportunity to meet before and also see familiar faces and familiar names. And it's just incredible to have this room. And 
and yay, you're all part of our pilot workshop here. So we're really excited to kind of kick this off and make this um, make this real. Um, I'm going to turn it over to, for just a moment to Leana because um, if you go to our Kumu project uh, website, you'll see that we do mention and send the links and the email for the in-between project because we really do want to um, make sure that everybody knows about this incredible project that as many, many who have been through the center know how difficult it is to be carrying out graduate, <laughs> graduate work um, you're on your own, um, but at the same time doing it during a pandemic, I can only imagine, and then at the same time carrying and bringing forward and creating and developing this project this, that you have um, developed, uh, that you're able to do that. So I want you to just share, take a moment and share a little bit um, about that project with everybody. Mahalo, Annie, and mahalo, Meliana, for including me in this um, space that you're creating um, with the East West Center community. Um, aloha and hafa day, everybody. My name is Leana Naholova'a, and I'm in my first year at the East West Center. Um, and along with Stephanie Tian, Sadaf Naim, Carolyn Siegman, um, these are some folks, Diane, um, Ariel, we're uh, creating this, what we're calling reflections on the in-between. And so in the chat, um, I'll just share with you the link to our submission page. Um, and if it's okay, let me just share my screen. And so um, this is the actual, um, oops, hopefully you can all see this okay. Do you all see this East West Center reflections thing? Okay, so mm -hmm. this is the um, submission form and it kind of gives you an overview of the project. Um, and uh, if you create an account and sign in, you'll be able to submit your work. And so today I, I wanna sort of give you uh, more information about it. So reflection on the in-between is basically just a, a digital anthology that we're creating to um, receive artwork, photography, and writing um, from the East West Center community. Um, and it really just started with the pandemic and how much our lives have changed. I mean, not just with being in lockdown, um, but just the sort of like social upheavals that have occurred in 2020 and already um, in 2021. Oops, I lost my picture for 2021. Sorry about that. Um, and so this collection will kind of be a snapshot or a time capsule of what I'm now realizing is the beginning of the new normal. Um, when we first started this project, we thought, oh, we're gonna go back to normal eventually but I feel that this is the new normal now. Um, and so where we're at with this project is really like, let's sort of remember what that transition was like um, when our lives totally changed. And so we see creative work from around the world. I mean, the East West Center community is literally around the world with all the alumni chapters um, in different countries, which is exciting. Um, mm -hmm. All members of the East West Center are invited to contribute, students, spouses, alumni, staff, supporters, donors. Um, we seek reflections. And so um, writing, writing anything for publication might be a little intimidating, but when we, when we look at it as a sort of like, introspection, a time to um, go within and to reflect on these changes it, and then sharing that with the community um, and reading each other's experiences. Um, hopefully like that takes the edge off. Um, and also we welcome submissions in all languages represented at the East West Center. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see, and not just like in your writing, but you can even infuse other languages into your artwork as well. Um, so that includes visual art, illustrations, photography, um, poetry, social media posts, song lyrics, mo'olelo, any genre of artistic and, and written expression you can imagine that can be sort of shared in a sort of digital platform. So that includes video media and audio media. I mean, we're not gonna be like a film festival or anything, but if your artwork includes video clips or audio clips, go for it. Um, here's some, uh, Sadaf, um, the art artist in our team, uh, couldn't make it today, but these are some of her photographs from being in lockdown in quarantine at uh, Halemanoa where she was staying. Um, and she also as an art student didn't have access to her studio and all her art supplies and materials. And so she created this piece just with um, different color nail polish, different <laughs> nail polish that she had at home and was able to create this beautiful piece. Um, here's just another, um, th this isn't from anyone created but somebody sent this to me as a kind of reference to the in-between. Um, this is a manga I think or I can't remember what kind, what you would call it the Japanese um, <laughs> cartoon. 
right? <laughs> yeah. And, and the only thing we do ask is that for something that you have produced during this pandemic, so any work before the pandemic, um, that might not be, we might not be the best place to publish your work, but if something that you've created during the pandemic to reflect on your experience of it, um, would be great. Um, and I, you know, normally I, I do a writing workshop and I just kind of wanted to share some uh, approaches to help people to consider um, how to narrow your focus. You might have so many things you could write about when it comes to this pandemic experience. And the first thing I, I suggest to anyone seeking to submit a piece of writing is just to brainstorm and list, make a, make a laundry list of all the things you could possibly write about. Um, and here I share um, some of my list, some, some things that are on my list when I was in Guam. I was so afraid of going into a store called Costulas that I went into all the time. The first cases in Guam were members uh, of my Lions Club that I knew. Uh, I was missing my, my wife and partner who lived in San Diego. My grandparents lost their social outlets of going to restaurants. I was, I had to sit at a computer for five hours every day for five days and I could just write a story about how much my body hurt. You know, there's so many different sorts of topics that you could think about and, you know, much more than this list. There's abundant life, uh, sea life in the, in the ocean, you know, at the beach, you know. Um, and then once you sort of spend some time generating a list and then choose something and just free write, like time yourself to do a free write, take your personal notebook and go out into nature somewhere and write something or just sit at your computer. And that would be a good way of developing your writing because then from that point on, you've selected a topic, um, you've uh, generated some writing and then it's a process of revision. And it's that, that revising process is, that is where writing takes place, you know? And so getting to this point where you have something to revise and submit is really kind of where it's at. Um, Let's see, oops, no, that's it. So this will be a digital publication that reflects these unique times shared with the whole East West Center community. And the deadline is March 31st, which is around the corner. Um, and we, and our team will be working with the writers um, if anything is needed in terms of feedback and possibly um, helping them revise their work to improve it. So look at that March 31st deadline is a bit fluid um, and I hope this makes sense and I invite you all to contribute. Thanks so much, Annie, for this time. Thank you, Leana. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Meliana. And I think through working out the, um, and having Meliana lead us through making the booklet um, and just getting the ideas and brainstorming together, reflecting on our time and experience at the East West Center with the East West Center, I think it will all come through. And then we'll talk a little bit about the end of, of Kind of what's to come for this project and kind of the next stages for it because we're just now at the beginning so Meliana may I turn it over to you at the beginning of another beginning okay so let's just all be open-minded because actually you know this is this is a new uh stretch for every single person on this call and I'm so grateful Liana doesn't know this yet <laughs> but Having made films and video clips and things, I'm so glad we're not accepting any of those things because to try to put it all together, good luck, Leanna, good luck, okay? Thank because, you. Because it's not easy. So we just have a simple little piece of paper here that we're gonna work with. So I'm gonna actually ask you guys, Do you, have you guys made your books? Okay, those of you who haven't made your books, it, um, the, the, the race is starting in about uh, two minutes. So you have to hurry up. Otherwise you're going to miss the race. Okay. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to, we're going to go to ca uh, camera two. Is this cool or cosmic? Um, but first, before we do that, I just want you all to know that, um, that the more we've done to prepare for this project, the more excited I've, I'm, I'm getting because, um, this is actually a really momentous time and you know we should all be taking time to be reflective about um, how our lives have been and how they are being changed and what we will be doing going forward. For me, um, I just wanna let you know that I was supposed to have finished a, a short film and there was no way I was gonna do that. 
unless this pandemic <laughs> happened. And I, I'm being kind of serious because our lives are overscheduled, overbooked, we're overworked, we're under resourced. And I just, everything fell off the, the deep end in March. And then I went, wow, I actually have time to finish this thing I was supposed to finish. So I actually did a, a completed a short film. And the reason I'm telling you that story is because this time is really precious. As much as we're doing your work for your degrees and other things, um, this is a really momentous um, occasion for us to really be reflective about how we're going forward and what we'll be doing in the future and how we'll be take, how we will be taking care of ourselves and each other better. And most importantly, the planet. Because if there's anything I've learned, it's if we don't start taking care of the things that need us, our attention most, then we won't have to worry about a future because there won't be one. And I don't want to be dour and, 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 you know, histrionic about things, but it's kind of that serious. So as we work to make our books, you guys all have your um, instructions or you know how to make your books. Um, I'm going to just drop the, the backdrop on this so you guys can see um, what I'm doing here. That's probably the best, right, Annie? That sounds great. That sounds great. Okay. So you guys all have a piece of paper. Those of you guys who haven't made this book, um, you're going to just have to hurry up because <laughs> I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to show, show you how to do it, okay? Fold your paper in half, please, and then fold it again so... The kids would say, oh, you mean hot dog style, Kumu? And I would say, yeah, hot dog style. So you're going to have something that looks like this, okay? And then you're going to open it up so you're half sheet, and you're going to turn it into a hamburger style. So just know that these are uh, a half sheet with quarters. You know, it's it's been uh, broken into little, divided into quarters, okay? Um, on the fold on the fold, not on the side that opens, please. There's always one. And if we were in person, I'd make you do a hundred push-ups or something, but you're lucky if you, you know, just don't mess up. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to cut on the fold, right. And then to the middle part of this, this page. And all of a sudden you have going to have a magic book. I'm going to open the page up and it's going to fold naturally together. And you're going to have a book. Is that like totally cosmic? So I, I want you to see that now you have, this is what we did in second and third grade, right? I never did this, but this has changed my life. This little art form is what I play with now and I do all sorts of things with it. So you too can make yourself a little book. You've just made yourself your first little book if you haven't. And we just figured, well, this, you can't be intimidated by a piece of paper. And that's all this is. <laughs> But the best part about it is it was a flat, lifeless piece of paper. It had nothing going on. It was just a two-dimensional thing, which is what education reminds me of today in many ways. And we turned it into something. We transformed it into a book. So just that alone is cosmic. That's the, worth the price of admission, okay? <laughs> So I'm really happy to see you all because um, let's do a little work together, all right? So Annie, I'm going to try to play with this uh, camera. Maybe we okay. just, yeah, let's okay. See. And does that, is that going to work? It's going to work. If you can switch on your other camera. Okay. And then you can keep the sound on the other one. Just keep the sound as it is. And then okay. here you are. Bad. Is that tricky, you guys? Be impressed, would you? Be impressed. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I just wanna show you a couple of examples. So as your, as your paper kind of looks cosmically beautiful and clean like this, um, I'm excited because there's so much potential there. I wanna take you through a couple of little books to show you what you can do, okay? Um, this is what we ended up doing um, for, the, for a, um, a COVID project. We took the world and we started out like this, where we just took a, a circle. And then as an artist, the, the iteration was to just take another circle on this side in a spread. So we put a little COVID there, and then we took another circle and made this half circle to make a sun. And then this spread, we made that half circle again and turned it into an eye. So what you have then at the end is, is, a, is a book about COVID or a conversation, and it goes both ways. 
And it's important for you to see it as, a, um, as an outline book, okay? Because this is what it looks like when it's, when it's finished. And I, I can turn this into uh, to this project and we're still not exactly sure what we're gonna do with the originals, whether that we're gonna pulp them all together and give people a part of these books or not. I think we're gonna do that, but this is what a book looks like finished um, when it's when it's been written into and drawn into. So I'm talking, I'm creating a story and the story has to do with a personal vision, my own, what I'm hoping in terms of this time, um, what I'm feeling about the world. So I'm, I'm writing in Hawaiian and, and I'm just talking about um, my thoughts about uh, this time. And then I'm writing about um, where are we going and then changes and what my, my sadness is about this. And then the sun as an energy permeating, radiating, changing uh, life for the, for the better for us. So what's, what's great um, to have you guys understand is that from a little piece of paper, we've transformed something. Yeah. And we're not asking for anything more than this. Um, so you have four spreads here. But I just wanted to show you, um, and we'll we'll start something together, maybe just as a sort of, sort of a rehearsal. But I wanted to show you um, different forms, okay? Um, like this form, for example. So I want you all to kind of take a look, and then tell me um, what it's about. And it's hard because you're kind of going, whoa, there's not a whole lot of information on this thing, right? Okay. Anybody want to give any idea what that this is about? Anybody want to guess? Well, this is another kind of book. So I want you to see that. And the reason I'm sharing this in particular is because, again, this was a, this was, um, gifted to me just an insight. I, I had to do a theology project recently for, for philosophy class. And I, I wanted to share this book idea, but I figured if I did something like this, nobody would know what it was, which is true. And then when I opened it, it became a, a whole piece. It became a diagnostic. So I really want you guys to see the, um, the range of what you can do with this piece. And um, maybe, maybe just this quick second right now, we can, we can talk about that as an idea. Maybe, do, does anyone have any questions? Because I actually think this is really a cool, um, cool uh, reveal. You know, it's, it's different than this, it's different than this in terms of story. Um, but I'd love to get uh, one or two people to, to comment before I show you just a few more things and maybe get us started on something. Anybody? Uh, you don't even have to raise your hand, just unmute yourself. And then if you've got a comment or observation, I would appreciate it. Better watch out. I might pick on you. Asma? <laughs> yes. Um, I quite like the idea of that surprise that comes up when you open the book completely. Yeah. So, uh, and especially because... I was part of uh, this Facebook group about uh, views from your window. Mm -hmm. And uh, every single day you saw thousands of windows from the rest of the world. And it wasn't anything sad. It was always something pleasant. And this is sort of like that when you're showing it one by one. Uh, it's... Um, you don't really know what it is, and when you open it, you see the whole picture. I like that. It's yeah. like different windows making one big window. And you know, that'll be really fun to experiment and explore. So, yes. we're not looking just for drawings, we're actually looking mm -hmm. for writing as well. So, it's yeah. in line with Leanna's um, work, but, but the only limitation is that you've got a piece of paper in front of you and that's all we're asking. So mm -hmm. it, could be, it could be exquisite and eloquent. It could be all sorts of things. It could be something as simple as 
as this, which is mm -hmm. uh, a two spread. You know, we're calling this the, the front and the back page. Um, this would be the something that people would go, well, what does that mean? And it doesn't mean anything, but when you open it, it becomes something front and back. And then as you go through, it could be, it could be a riddle and you're using words in this particular um, book. And what's exciting is you're playing with riddles and things so that when you open it, you, you know, Aya um, Mala I, which is here's the garden. And then I is over here, which means yes to Pono, you know, yes to righteousness. And the righteousness is Aloha. So in a, in a crazy way, this is wonderful because it was just me sitting at a bus stop going, oh, well, I've got a few words I'm gonna put down. And then when I opened the piece, it, it became something else. So I want, I want you to know that it's a lot, a lot more friendly than, than, than you think, because it's only one piece of paper, right? So I, I love that part, right? So maybe I'm just gonna show you one more book. Um, yeah, just one more, um, maybe just two, because this ends up being uh, an absolute abstract of a book. You just kind of look at this and go, what the heck is it? And then when you open it up, it's just a watercolor uh, abstraction of, of, of a scene, you know? And I'm not done with this. This is actually called an underpainting. So I've just done a start of it. And where it's going from here, I'm not sure. But the best part about it is I've started. And I think, I don't want you all to think you have to do something that's perfect or finished or, you know, a masterpiece, because we're not looking for masterpieces. If we were this, this, we would be doing a different kind of class. And I, I really, really want to encourage that, that this is the kind of opportunity for, for you all to explore. And many of you are, are my beloved linear sequential friends and types. So you, you, you all are sort of like, you know, regimented into this, oh, it's got to look like this, it's got to have one answer, it's got to be this way, when in fact, you're talking to a nonlinear, non sequential, who's learned to have to write and do all those things. But for me, there's a joy here in understanding the notion of opposites, for example, okay, there's a joy in me being part of a uh, a planetary conversation as in I'm here as an angel over here and look at me in the stars, I'm being a star. Um, this was the, the uh, full eclipse of the sun uh, when my granddaughter was born three years ago, three and a half years ago. And I couldn't get to them because nobody wanted to see grandma until at, you know, a few more days. So then I had to, then I you know, had this, but it makes for a really beautiful story, yeah. And, and I think that's what I want you all to know that the intuitions, um, I, I call it the sixth sense, the intuitions that you have are gonna really help you in this project. Because what we want you to do is to go deep into your feelings, you know, your, your fears, your reservations, your aspirations, your contemplations about this time. So maybe, um, if, if I do, I'm going to just sit here. You, I can wait a long time, by the way. I, <laughs> I just would love, um, I just don't want to be talking, talking. I, I actually would love some, some feedback, maybe questions about the project before we, we, we really start anything. Because um, we're just going to be talking anyway. But maybe, um, Bonnie, you can share with us and Mamiko and uh, Sri just maybe I'll line you guys up and then the others who want to jump in just so that you have a chance to um, just to say, hey, this, this is intimidating or a piece of cake or how many books can I do? I mean, that would be really cool. So just, just know I'm, I'm just kind of listening for, for your comments, um, Nikki. And um, is it Viren or Viren? It is Viren, Viren Lotus. It is. Okay, Viren. Aloha. Aloha to you. And then I'd love to, to see what you're up to as well. Okay. So I'm going to actually smiling, uh, pick on, not pick, but choose each and every one of you <laughs> so you, you can share. Hey, Bonnie, what you got there? Um, well, hello, everybody. I'm Bonnie uh, calling from the Big Island. 
I um I was just you know listening to you and Annie talking about the project and also uh, Leanna and I was just inspired by like like all different creative things are happening over there. <laughs> so um and but I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing for Kumu project, but I've never done this booklet making and I just spontaneously did a cutout and just drew just to test out like what it looks like. Yeah. And I didn't follow the direction correctly initially so I cut the other end and I'm like oh no I did it wrong so I taped it <laughs> so I use a tape to tape it up uh, I was not a very good student in the beginning so yeah one thing I learned but yeah this is great thank you so much well you know what I want to thank you because um you know, it took me 20 years to get from, from one thing to another. And, and in the last year, I've done 14 things with this book. So just want to tell you, you, you're on the right track. If you've cut it in half, that's fine. Taped it together. Because you know what we're going to need right now is we're going to need some radical thinking out of the box to help the planet, to help each other. So whatever that means you know, knock yourselves out, ladies and gentlemen, because that's what I'm, I'm actually, that's what we're hoping for. We're hoping for some really uh, exceptionally uh, deep and, and extraordinary things. And you, you can't be, again, too intimidated by a piece of paper. This is one paper. So, you know, be intimidated by Liana's project, but <laughs> because maybe she wants something bigger, but we're only asking for one piece of paper here. So just, it's kind of exciting. I think so. And I'm a little intimidated, but don't tell anybody. Okay. So I think, um, Mamiko, I, I, I mentioned your name. So hi. Hi, hi. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, aloha kako. So, hey. um, yeah, I know Meliana from a couple of other uh, workshops and projects, especially uh, you've done work with State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Correct. Um, so when your name popped up in an email from East West Center, I was like, oh, I've seen this in action where um, you did a workshop with state legislators a few years ago. Oh my ago. God, you guys, that was fun. <laughs> that was, yes, seeing you get these very type A, mostly lawyers, never taken an art class in their life, you know, personalities and get them making art and get them excited. I was like, okay, yes. Um, because for me last year is kind of a blur. Um, like I've been feeling a little more like I can focus and I can work on things now um, and going, what did I do last year? You know, so yeah, this was, it's one sheet of paper. This is an easy place to start and not feel overwhelmed by all of the things that I could be doing. So yeah, thank you for this. You know what? It's so nice to see you again. Cause let me tell you, I walked into that room and wanted to walk right out. I had 23 <laughs> legislators. And the, the last time most of them had taken an art class was in third grade. I went, uh oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> So I just want to give you a heads up. If, if we could get through that, we can get through anything. So it's really nice to see you again, my dear. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. And I think I, I wanted to get some feedback from Sri. And then I, I see my a beloved colleague and friend staring right at me, Rick. Hi, Ricardo. Come va? <laughs> so we'll, we'll get Sri, Sri to share yeah. and then... Um, Viren and, and Rick, that'd be wonderful. And, and whoever else, just jump in here, okay? Aloha, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, so, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh, to the East West Center, Eric Chang and Annie Reynolds for this uh, opportunity. It's been a while since I, since we moved to Oahu from Molokai. I used to live there when I was working at the public library and I heard so much about um, Kumu Meliana Meyer. And finally, <laughs> I have the chance to meet her as a, <laughs> prominent artist and a writer and a book owner, bookstore owner. So yeah, I started making the book today. If you can see it here, mm -hmm. I have the book and I started by just paging, <laughs> making pages for the four layers. <laughs> but I, I'm planning to um, draw something with acrylic. Um, and also, I think I will also include some uh, sentences or phrases in my native tongue because I was born in Indonesia 
and yeah. I was an East West Centre grantee uh, back then. So uh, I'm going to include some phrases in my language besides English and my drawing. So I hope it'll be a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, and I just yeah. wanted to say it's so wonderful to see you here. And it was always so special for Eric and I and our team to bring groups over to Molokai Public Library. It was one of our favorite hubs and bringing outreach over there. And to be able to go visit Molokai and then speak Indonesian with you was just always so wonderful <laughs> for my husband, Tumade, to, to have that connection here. So it's wonderful to see you here and happy to have you on Oahu with us. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Sri. Great to see you. Love, lovely to meet you, my dear. Lovely to meet you. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Viren, do you have something you'd like to share? Yes. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, EWC for organizing this uh, workshop uh, and, uh, and the artists. Uh, um, and uh, I'm very excited uh, to be a part of this workshop because what I feel uh, um, the, the, the challenges we are we face during the pandemic and we can uh, draw on this small booklet and we can share and uh, with the uh, like-minded uh, people like all of you. And, um, and I'm very excited to share uh, what uh, I have seen in India, especially in New Delhi, um, during the pandemic, I traveled almost uh, 3,000 kilometers all over India to just feel uh, what is real India. Because in uh, normal life, uh, we have seen big theaters, malls, everything. Uh, but uh, the reality was pandemic, what, what, what I feel. And um, yes, uh, it was uh, a very hard time for me, very difficult. Then I was on, uh, on road, highways. So people uh, walking like thousands of thousands kilometer from their uh, workplace to, to their hometown. So it was not a, a good time. And what I feel I can share that story on this uh, booklet. So yes, I'm very excited uh, to make uh, uh, storytelling on this booklet. And uh, yes, my question is, uh, can I like make uh, more or uh, more piece of paper like this so I can make a you, good you're gonna, uh, story? You're gonna, be, you're gonna be surprised because this is gonna be a chapter book. I'll show you how to put them all together because this is just, it could be the first chapter of 20 of these. I mean, it makes me want to cry because I love your beloved country having been there a few times and the complexity of a place like India is so profound. Just thinking about it makes me want to, to cry. And I mean that good tears, but very complicated in terms of just everything from language to history, to food, to story. So, so remember in this project, everyone, we are storytellers first and foremost we are artists and creatives first and foremost and you know we might not consider ourselves professionally those titles but i can tell you what we're doing with this little piece of paper is we're sharing our voices you know so that we're not invisibles so that we're actually able to say during this time we experience something and as viren is talking about this um, I can imagine you could be doing hundreds of these books, but just know this is such a powerful tool that I hope you're able to use this in your own communities because you'll be surprised. I have had such a blast working on Molokai, working with, you know, kids in shelters, working with the women in the prisons, working, you know, with my own family, making these things. And, and the most beautiful thing about it is that it's it's a, a it's a it's a small part of us you know that we can't get too intimidated by unless we wanted to do 400 you know little books that viren might be doing but you know <laughs> um by the way you can also make 
this with large pieces of paper and make larger books. So I'm just giving you options. I just said only one piece of paper. So if one of you wants to do something crazy, be my guest. Cause I was thinking about making a piece of paper that was four by eight feet so that you could actually almost walk into it. But you know, we'll see, we'll see. I have to find the paper first, but just as an option, those are, those are some things to think about. Right. So, so Rick, Thank you, Viren, very much. And I'm going to ask you before I, we, we um, highlight Rick, I'd like to ask where you are from in India. Uh, from New Delhi. Okay. I'm from New okay. Delhi. Okay. You know, I love it when people say, where, where are you from? And you say Hawaii or China or India. It's like, oh, <laughs> give me a break. Okay. It's like, what am I supposed to do? Guess the 10 million things or places. So thank you, New Delhi. Wow. What, that's the hub. I have some good um, stories about New Delhi. Okay, so thank you. My, uh, hi, um, this is Marina. I'm hi, also Marina. Look, I'm also located in India right now. Um, okay. Interestingly enough, um, not voluntarily, but I had to make this journey in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and so I'm located in Kerala at the moment. Um, and um, through your um, talk today, I, I just thought of a word that, um, um, I learned because of you before I knew you um, in a class, a paper I read, um, um, the word was muli bai. Um, mm. And it was the only uh, thing I remember from that paper, honestly. Um, but it's, it's a Hawaiian word um, that is the space where the river and the ocean meet, if I remember right. You are and correct. It's a, it's this, yeah, um, and it was just such a powerful word and the way in which you um, interpreted that as a space of dissonance, a space of change, but also a space of potential. And I feel like we're all kind of bubbling in this little space right now, sort of pushed from one field into the other um, and sort of trying to figure out how it all brims over. Yeah, um, so thank you. I'm so- That's the I'm word I wrote down. I'm so happy, Marina, that you shared because Kerala is the first place I, I landed in India and I thought, where am I? It looks like I'm on an, uh, uh, an outer island. It was so familiar. And, and then the adventure started. So Mulivai is, is, is not only that place in between uh, for the waters in terms of the fresh water and the salt water, but it is that blending and it is that rich environment that, that causes different things to grow. And it's so important. Typically it's the springs that come up closest to the ocean. So Mulivai for us is a really powerful, powerful um, word, my dear. And um, thank you for bringing that, that up. And I, two confessions, I have a whole bunch of sisters so one owns a bookstore. So thank you, uh, Sri, because that's not me. <laughs> that's my sister, Miley. And I have another sister, Manu, that I impersonate on, on rare occasion um, because she's, she's a philosopher. So if I kind of look familiar, but not totally, it's because I'm number one in the group, as in the eldest, with two siblings who want to be older than I am. <laughs> Just kidding. No, but in, in other words, it's important that you know that um, I come from a really um, wonderful family and we're all doing things in the Kauai community. So this word, word mulivai is actually really important. And I hope it was me that shared that with you. <laughs> Thank you, Marina. Oh, Rick, could you please, could you please um, join us with your wonderful mana'o, dear? Aloha. Nice yeah, well, um, as uh, some of you know, I'm essentially a musician, and so that uh, doing something so material was kind of like uh, the the attraction for this particular uh, event. And I I did mine before, so I had mine all ready to go. And what uh, occurred to me even before uh, I we met today, but. Uh, I, I was interested in, 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 in the idea of, of the, the in-betweenness, the liminality. And so as I, I looked at my piece of paper, I thought, well, actually, I could draw on both sides. And so what I planned to do was to, to have uh, one side sort of, the, um, sort of the joys of the pandemic 
and the other side, the sort of the tragedies of the pandemic. Because I mean, even though you know people have died and, and we've been alone and all that, on the other hand, the, the pandemic has uh, allowed us to get together like this on Zoom. We would never have done this before. Mm -hmm. I was an anti-Zoomer for a long time. <laughs> and, and also the idea that, you know, what can we possibly do just looking at each other on a, on, a, on a screen? I mean, how can we reach out to each other as opposed to being in person? And of course, then with the pandemic, it's forces to figure out how we do that or, or if it really works. So that's what I sort of plan to do with my book is to um, uh, draw on one side the sort of the, I guess the sad things, uh, people who, who passed away and, and, um, and things that have been lost and then undo it. And on the other side, um, uh, draw and, and, and also write about things that have been the joys of the pandemic. Uh, so that's sort of you know, what I, I sort of uh, came up with. And then when you were talking just now and, and showing all the different books, I can see the possibilities. I'm kind of a linear person. And so I was just thinking of, you know, it's, it's all pages you keep opening and opening and I didn't think about opening the whole page to have it mean something uh, larger than just the, the, uh, the four pages that I had uh, thought I was gonna work with. So that's kind of neat, thanks. Well, you know what's so exciting, my dear, dear Rick, this guy, I've known him only for 30 or 40 years or something, but um, <laughs> just want to just thank you for, for everything that you've done for the center with the center and the fact that you're on now. I just, I just love it. I love it. The fact that you've also discovered the other side is really important <laughs> because it took me about 15 years to realize I could open up the book, you know, yeah. just like you say, oh, well, it's this page, it's this page. But actually, for me as an educator, when you open all of this, it becomes a diagnostic, as in you can not only tell a story, but you can actually do some reading, very quick reading about how people are feeling, what, where they are. And so it becomes a very powerful tool. And I've been working with the School of Medicine uh, with storytelling. And so that's been a whole nother adventure and the fact that there is another side to this paper is I was hoping somebody was going to say that so that only took me 20 years to figure out so <laughs> what what I want to do if it's okay with you guys and then just speak up is I want to just go back to this little thing with watercolor and as we're working um feel free and is Feroza is that how to pronounce your name it's beautiful yes we are both Ferozas and we're both from Bombay there's wow. Feroza Mufti. I think she's on the Zoom as well. I saw her name. Wow. And uh, we're delighted to be here. Yay. Uh, absolutely thrilled that uh, Michael and Eric and all of you at East West Center thought of us. And we're definitely going to take part in this project in a, hopefully in a small way to start with. And uh, my typing's not very good. So Eric, I will prepare something of a Parsi meal for you in those little pages. <laughs> you lucky, that's so, so wonderful. My and everyone can, uh, everyone can partake of our feast. <laughs> and we're so honored to have you both here. I was so thrilled to see both of you on the list. And let me just uh, do a quick screen share from mm -hmm. the exhibition that you both worked with Michael. And, and the team on. Can everybody see this? This was in wow. 2016. Jeez. Wow. That's so beautiful, Firosa. That's so incredible. And that's, what, that's why we love the center because honestly, um, we, we couldn't get to these places and yet all of this work has come here. So that's meant the world for, to me living on an island where I get to actually experience cultures from, from the world. So just know that's such a privilege for to, to be sharing that and to have you on tonight, my dear, that's wonderful. Well, it's a, it was 7.30 in the morning for the two of us. We're already on Saturday. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> we know India is it's always hard in India and now we have no, but this, this is perfect. This is perfect. Not like 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's 2.51 here in 
Good London. Oh, oh God. Who's in London? Who's in London? Um, in London joining <laughs> us. Well, bless you. Thank you, my dear. Oh, That's my goodness. I have to be a little bit quieter because yeah. the rest of the house is asleep. Oh, my goodness. I love it. I love it. So maybe maybe we'll just take a moment and go to this this um, camera and I'll just uh, I don't know what to do about that but maybe Annie you can figure that out okay um, what I want what I wanted to show you is a simple watercolor set you know you can get them down at any store um, and this is what I call a, a well. And so you don't need a big glass of water like this, right? People always have water and I kind of laugh. I said, this is, this is your painting well, this is your water well. And so what, what I was hoping to do is just take this, this piece today because I'm not sure exactly what I wanna do. So I'm, I could do this uh, five different times, but I think I'm just gonna play, you know, I'm gonna just take this as a, and by the way, watercolor is not paint, so it's not acrylic. It's actually watercolor. So I, I was, I'm always telling the kids, it's water, water, watercolor. So don't get too excited. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> it's pretty simple, but it's, it's going to, I think it's going to add to this. I'm not sure. And the great part is because it's just a piece of paper, I um, can, can start it over tomorrow or I can start it over later. I just want to modulate the colors and in terms of music, um, I love music. I just didn't have the, um, you know, the, the, the talent uh, to, to do what I wanted to do in music and that I can play with in, in, in visual art. So I stuck with what I could do that was a little bit easier. But even this, this uh, change is kind of fun because it, it, it's doing something to a background, right? And I'm not sure um, exactly what's what's going on. So I think what I'll do is just change colors and uh, go to orange. And I just want you to know that uh, for me, this uh, complementarity, the opposition, as many people in a way from a Western orientation think of, is not this yin and yang, right? It's the complementarity. So I, I want I want to sort of mix that color. This is supposed to be orange, but it's already mixed in my palette, a brown. But I just want to just kind of play. I'm not sure what this means, but I might do do about eight or ten of these just to see how I feel about it. But I, I wanted just to take a moment just to um, blend that color and see see what that would look like. And sure enough, it's going to turn into a brown. So you know, from an artist's point of view, you need to know that. Our complementary sets um, all give us the same color, which is brown. So you have your blue and your orange, your yellow with your purple, and then your red with your green. Um, so I'm, again, just playing with colors at the moment um, just to see. So I'm going to just, um, but it's just good to, for you guys to see actually how watercolor is used because people are always trying to paint with watercolor and it's not meant to be painted <laughs> with. It's water, 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 color in that order. So you should be doing water, 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 color, not water, too much paint so that you can't ever have it dry. So I'm just having fun right now with these kinds of uh, color changes. And then you just dump this water out and put your brush back and you're done. So I, I have to let this dry. And I'm not sure now that I even wanna leave this white but I'm not sure I might go back into um, to this, but the great part is to be able to go, okay, what else um, am I able to do? So this is just another one of these projects. Again, we started with the world. So maybe if you guys want to do a practice, um, maybe those of you guys who don't have any um, burning idea, we, we could start with this as a practice just to get you guys uh, jumping in on it. What do you think? Manu? <laughs> okay, because we'll, we'll start with um, our paper um, here. Um, and I'm glad we did Mulivai because I'm gonna keep that word. Thank you so much, my dear, for sharing that word again. It's a beautiful word and it does mean the in-between. So I'm just gonna turn this around. So 
let's just do a quick um, uh, half circle. And if we were working with the little babies, I would not want them to stress out. So I, I would just have, have them and they'd say, Kumu, does it have to be a perfect half circle? And I would typically say no. So the, the good part is then you can surprise them and say, oh, look, you have another piece, piece of paper that you, can, um, that you can join. So we're talking about two halves. And in terms of the world, uh, this is a very simple representation. So then you don't have to get panicked because it's really simple, right? All we're gonna do is make it like this and then it's a world, right? So I, I want you to, to see that it, it's as simple as that. So, so Nikki's looking at her paper going, oh, that's easy, right? Come on, it's very easy. And then if you wanna like be really fancy and then have people think that, you know, this is that big thing a blade or something that goes around and it has all the longitude and latitudinal numbers, then you can do that. And then just by taking um, taking another pencil, you can do your um, latitudinal lines and your longitudinal lines, and then just put in some color to create a ball, right? So I just want you guys to take a moment if you, if you want, and just remember, it's just a piece of paper, so, um, Again, you just, I don't want you to take this too seriously other than seriously, if you get my drift. So I, I wanna create a ball here. Oh, and, and I wanted to show you something really funny because people, people laughed when I showed them this before. Do, do, you, see, do you see this? <laughs> what does that look like to you guys? So it's like somebody doesn't know their geometry, I mean, their, their, their scale, right? Like, what are we doing with Hawaii in the middle of the world so large? Anybody want to give me some feedback on that? What does that mean? Anybody? Go ahead. Are they the Hawaiian yeah. Islands? They are. And what, what does, why, why did I make it so large? Because Hawaii is the navel of the world. Yes, Ricardo, it's so right. And not only that, but I'm being Hawaiian centric. I am being Hawaii centric. So, you know, I don't live on the continent. Uh, I'm not part of the continent. And we could get into that politically later. But so for me, this is the most important place in the whole wide world, because I live here. <laughs> and if I lived in Taiwan, Taiwan would be that one big island. If I lived in uh, Tibet, Tibet would be my, my center, okay? So, so this is why this is kind of silly to have this world as, I mean, Hawaii as large as it is, but it's important that you guys know that's the reason, not just because I, I, I don't know my geography well enough to know that we're a little dot and you can't even see us on the planet. That's a sadness to me. People need to know we're there, right, Isabella? Right? And where, where are you? Are, are you here? Share where you're from, where, where you are right now. Hello there. I'm in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I'm oh my goodness. How spectacular. Wow. Okay. Because I'm, I'm really enjoying your backdrop there, your, your, your wall of this deep, deep cadmium mandarin red. It's so beautiful. Oh. Yeah. So there's, some, there's a lot of history and a lot of story on that wall. So I just want you to know, this is a great opportunity for us to go, wow, I wonder you know, why Nikki looks like she's outside in a beautiful Korean or Japanese village, you know? <laughs> Isn't it great? And Pedals, I love all your books. If that were my choice, th that's where I would be in your library. So as you guys are, how are you guys doing with your world? Are you guys ready to, to go on to page two? Yeah. Okay, and by the way, you can always come back, right? I'm not saying you're finished, don't touch this. I'm saying, enjoy that you started something and now let's, let's, let's go on. Just, just this is practice anyway, okay? And then number two page is um, this, I, I would say this is a pretty evil, awful um, Corona, you know? And I did this, um, let's see, there you go. Can you see it? No. I did this with watercolor. So you've got the, the light here, the very translucent and the very dark opaque. So this is just a variation on a theme, right? So you've got this. So, so take, take a moment, 
for this spread to draw, right? You know, to draw a COVID or a whole bunch of COVIDs, whatever you want to do. And I hear now they're like 19 vari variants. I'm just going, what the heck? What are we supposed to do about that? You know, um, I'm really, I'm, I don't want to be afraid. So I'm not going to be, but this is now causing me to wonder what this darn thing looks like, you know? And then it's also causing me to think, um, how was it created and how are we responsible for this? Because it's kind of going crazy, right? And um, why, why is it going crazy? It's such a little thing, it's microscopic and yet it's got the whole world paralyzed, right? So I myself am um, kind of, honestly, I'm in disbelief that, that this thing, it has uh, wreaked so much havoc. So I'm, I'm gonna just use my little um, watercolor right now, my green and my um, red and just see what I can come up with. Um, I'm just working on the background. You know, oftentimes people are always saying, well, why, why are you so, um, you know, cavalier or, or casual in the things that you're doing right now? And I, I'm thinking, well, this isn't really cavalier. It might look like it. It might look like something that's really informal because it kind of is but it also is the beginning. So it isn't as if you can start something and then have it look beautiful. So just know that all of these things take time. It's like, um, I was gonna say a shitty first draft, but I shouldn't use that word. So I'm not going to. In other words, it's, a, it's just like, put your thoughts down, get things down. If you don't like it, you can change it later. So I just want you to know that this is gonna have at least, um, five or six iterations. And in terms of your writing and poetry, it's the same thing. So that's why with Liana's uh, project, the, this notion of in between, this is a definitely in between, this has just started. So I, I don't even have a sense of it uh, right now other than it's, it's, uh, it's a wet piece of paper. So <laughs> I'm just going, oh no, now what do I do? Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this next page and I'm going to, um, have you guys think of something, uh, it could be the sun, it could be a laser beam, it could be prayer. What does this prayer look like that was gonna save the world? What is gonna save us? Is it our intentions? It is, is it the sun uh, healing us with its radiance and warmth? What is gonna heal us? I just put a sun out there because it seems to be a a friendly thing that people can get into, right? So this is something I, I put all my words and energy into this one source right here. So as you're, as you're ruminating, as you're thinking, um, what is it? I, I put sun there, but my goodness, it could easily be a prayer that we all say at the same time, you know, three months from now, wouldn't that be something? that we could have come up with a prayer that would save us all. I, I would love that idea, just something. And by the way, um, I, I usually just work with color pencils and regular big pens and Sharpies. So, so just know you don't have to get fancy things, you know? And so um, again, this is, this is meant to be not intimidating. So I'm gonna just take a moment and, uh, and do some writing here.
Liana, if you have anything you want to add to just jump in here, okay? Uh, I'm actually looking for Anne Lamott's shitty first draft article to send to you all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay. I'm so glad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just so they can see here, I can upload it. And you know, when you're when you're working, just remember, um, this is where brilliance comes from. It comes from deep places. It comes from us channeling and sharing ideas together. So I always feel deeply um, energized when I spend time with um, folks like this, because believe it or not, as much as we're not in the same room, we're sharing energy. And when I think about um, the sun, I also think about the electric of things. So in a, in a strange and actually rather perverse way, all of this electricity through the, the ethers and the wires connects us in ways that I really never appreciated as much uh, before. And when Rick started talking about like, we could never do this um, ever with Kuala Lumpur and in India with folks here and in London. I mean, honestly, it's it's just a, an extraordinary thing that we can share this time together. So I, I am comforted by all of you um, spending time. And um, do I know um, what I'm doing? Not necessarily, but you got to know that this left side and right side of our brain if we'd spent more time coalescing and allowing for that little right side to just not direct traffic, but just allow it to play, amazing things happen. And we don't even understand necessarily what they mean right now, but later we will. And then we'll be going, oh my God, remember that time we did this together, et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's, that's what this is meant to be. It's meant to be a moment of kind of like, um, you know, revelation on some level. Now, that doesn't mean you can't wreck things like I may just have right now, because I just put some purple on this, but it's gonna dry. So, or I can go get my um, paper towel. So as we're, as, and I could take some of this color off and then let it dry. But um, wow, okay, it's kind of looking like it's going somewhere. I don't know if you guys can see that. But I just wrote in Hawaiian. And, um, and by the way, does it have to reveal to everyone every little thing that you're thinking of? No, because basically this is, um, believe it or not, this is a, um, uh, this is a sketch. This is a, a, a drawing. This is a journal piece. This doesn't have to be anything more than that. Remember, we're not looking for a masterpiece so much as we're looking for an essence of something that you want to share to, with the group. Okay. 
So this is my little sun energy, but I have to still contemplate, you know, what it is with all that red that I've done. So I'm not sure, but to be, to be discussed later. So maybe what we'll do is um, as this book is drying, which is kind of fun, is I'm going to come up with my last piece. And this piece is going to have to do with the eye. So as you are thinking, these are all different eyes. This could be a personal eye. It could be a world eye, but it's very, um, very simple in terms of its, um, you know, uh, use of the, the uh, form, right? Use of this round, but there are three eyes here. Um, I'm not sure again what, what I wanna say here, but I'm gonna play with that as well. But on this book, I'm gonna go back to um, maybe something really uh, unusual I'll go to, um, somehow I wanna make this an eye that's sleeping. So I'm, I'll have to think about that. And this is really good for you to see. So if I made a mistake on this, I might have to go back with my, um, with my um, white paint or something, but you, I wanted to do that um, not necessarily on purpose, <laughs> but so that you could see, okay, well, I messed up here, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to resolve this. So the next time I see you, when you see this book, you'll know that you were part of this book because this is going to be beautiful when it's done. But um, again, this is, this is a draft. This is working with some ideas and hopefully this kind of uh, work that we we've, we've just done will give you, inspire you to do, to do more, you know, to, to want to kind of give this another shot, another, you know, two to 20 books kind of thing. Hi, Kiran. I, I, I'm so happy to see your face. So this is hello. And Jen, it would be nice to see you as well as Firoza Mistri and Bronson. But thank you so much for, um, you know, as we're, as we're just kind of uh, winding down, we have another 15 minutes. What I'd love to do is just open the conversation and um, and see pretty cool. Yeah, I can be in two places at the same time. <laughs> but um, maybe we can just share uh, 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 one of your one of your drawings if you'd like, and maybe just share a little bit about it, um, or ask a question because I'd, I'd love to to see where you all are. This is my drawing so far. Oh, beautiful. Oh my goodness. Okay. And you've got your background so we can hardly see that, but. Um, can we see without the background and maybe we can see it. Sometimes it's hard to see. Yeah, with your background, when you have a background, it's hard to see. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> It's it like doodling, <laughs> doodling. <laughs> oh no, it is a doodle. It is a doodle. It's wonderful. It's wonderful, wonderful. And, and you know, um, the culture that we're bringing into the work is so critical. To me, it's like the, it's the, the beginning, the alpha and the omega of all things is who we are in the world culture. Because without that, who would we really be, you know, seriously. So just know how important that is in this work, right? So does anyone want to just um, share a page? Um, Dina, or is it Diana? Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, Where are you today? I'm in Mililani. Okay. <laughs> you, have a, you have a spread you'd like to share with us today? Well, I, when I was... Uh, learning about everyone. Uh, so I think my idea, I'm going to do, uh, can you guys see? Roads. Roads. Okay. And Road. how they're all different, yet it can connect in some way. Okay. And yeah. So that's where I'm going to go with. <laughs> my and you know what's exciting about that? When you open the, the large paper, you could have four different sets of roads and then actually figure out how one, one aspect could tie and it could tie together with color or it could tie together with um, a certain weight of a pen. Mm -hmm. So just know that as you're working, 
it's it's also a visual poem in a really interesting way because line can do that. So I really yes, yes. like I like that idea. And what I want you all to know is we can give give each other permission to take an idea and explore it. Just because Deanna shared that, it doesn't mean it's her idea yeah. about roads, okay? <laughs> and it doesn't have to be an absolute one answer. If we were all given roads to, to do, we'd all be doing them differently. So the fact that we do have a thematic, which Liana actually gave us, she didn't, you didn't know that you gave us that as well, but the in between Manao about the thought about this time in COVID mm -hmm. is really what the book is also about. Most importantly is, is like, is it a solution? Is it a kanikau? Is it a lament to someone who's died? Um, whatever, but yeah. So let's just, let's keep it with the, with those thoughts in mind as in, this is a time we're creating. I love that. And that's a limitation which will really add to the, the strength of the work. So um, let's see. Eric, do you have anything you want to share? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Um, I was just, you know, I'm here kind of helping with the Zoom too, but um, I was just taking some notes. So I, I kind of combined your little globe um, Meliana with the COVID, also with Hawaii in the middle. Oh, um, wow. Okay. And then I just, I liked what you said, brilliance comes from deep places. Um, and then I just wrote uh, my kind of definition of Muliwai uh, up top. Okay, fantastic. So thank you for sharing because what you did is put everything together. It's like, yeah, thank whoa. you all. So, okay. Well, you might be in my journal too tonight. This is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, for sharing. Um, let's see. Anybody I didn't call yet, that, or anyone who wants to share? Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Viren. And Rick, you can be next. <laughs> Mine doesn't, does it show? Sorry. Well, oh, yeah, get rid go of ahead. that. Go ahead, Viren. I'm, I'm messing here. So. Okay. Viren? Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I want to show that because uh, um, I was uh, going through your drawings uh, and uh, um, I was looking at the globe again and again and with a circle. So my mind got stuck into that circle. And um, then, yeah, I made, uh, I copied your idea because making this globe mm -hmm. and um, Yes, after that, uh, I made that globe into a bread. Mm. And uh, this is uh, during the pandemic. And uh, because uh, before the pandemic, we were enjoying everything. But uh, after lockdown, we were needing only the bread. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing else. So somehow... The globe is round, and in India, bread is round. And uh, yes, then the uh, this is the society because there is one bread, and uh, this is the population of India. One side is is uh, limited, very 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 few very few few population, ri rich class. So they have a half piece of bread, but the people, they are very limited. But another side, the bread is small and number of the people is very higher. Wow. So they are getting very less percentage of uh, this bread, a single bread. And uh, what is that single bread, basically? And uh, that single bread uh, is uh, India. India is a single bread. And uh, yeah, if, uh, if, if I open up this book, then uh, yeah, so this is uh, something like uh, one bread and uh, yeah, a number of people, very higher. So it, it just came in my mind through your, uh, this globe. And, uh, and I hope uh, it is uh, nice to continue with uh, this globe and bread and then uh, the co coronavirus it is it is also round so 
Thank you for showing uh, your globe and giving me idea. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you for sharing. And you know something, my dear friend Srivatsa Gos Goswami from Vrindavan, um, I was with him in Austria years ago and the thing he shared with me from his wife was the last two pieces of morsels of bread that he had. And you know something, that was life changing for me because his wife gave him something. And in the last day before we were all leaving, he decided to share that with me. And so your, your um, sharing about bread really touches me. So I just, just want you to know, yeah, I got, got it immediately and we, we all get it. So that's why the visual is so powerful, you then. So that just really, um, that actually really moves me. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Rick, do you have something you want to share? What do I say? How do I do this? I can put up the camera, right? Yeah, you just put it right up there and, and then you're going to get pinned because okay. uh, Annie's going to pin you or okay. ping you or whatever she needs to do. <laughs> but I, you know, what I did was um, sort of thought about being liminal and I, I uh, wrote the same word in all the languages I'm liminal to. So Auge is German and uh, Mata is Tagalog, Maka is Hawaiian and Oho is Spanish. And these are all languages that um, I've been uh, involved with, but don't speak really uh, as, a, as a first language. And then I discovered, I think I, 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 I uh, folded my thing wrong because I had to do it on two pieces of uh, two different pages. But then I figured, well, as long as I did that, I can do something like this. <laughs> so I, I, I took the, the same idea and, oops, I can't, yeah, there we go, uh, that I made the, uh, the same eye and then I got the, the words together that, 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 that fit, uh, but as opposites. So mati is death in, in Taosug and make is death in Hawaiian. And odo is I in, in uh, Spanish. And uh, <laughs> you can't see it, but that, there's another word there that me also means I in, in, um, in, in uh, Tagalog. So that was sort of by liminality, also by making a mistake in the way I folded my paper, I think. Yeah, but just think of what you've done. You've just given yourself another idea and all of us another idea in terms of folding our paper. Because I know exactly what you did. It would, and, and, you know, go try, explain how to do this without visuals and talking on the phone. It's actually very difficult. So the fact that we, you're sharing that is amazing. You might have just uh, created a new art form, Rick. I just want to give you a heads up. So I might, I might have to practice that just to see, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god don't, don't you love all this it's, it's kind of wild so um fine line between a mistake and creativity okay that's what it's all about that's how that's how extraordinary things happen um annie you you have uh additional thoughts you want us to sh want to share or liana i yeah i, I want to give liana some time too oh. uh, but i just we we're about to close and i, I I couldn't believe how quickly the time went past and I'm so happy to see everybody here and share this time with you and and look forward to receiving um, everybody's everybody's booklets and and um, working with Meliana has been really incredible in developing this project and I think I speak for the whole team in saying that and coming back again to the idea of this project and we really came to this word kumu the word kumu as tree as resource connecting to place um, all these things that we've been talking about and discussing this and um, what you've been able to bring us to, I think is really incredible because, you know, wanting to do for us, we don't do um, community art projects, but we wanted to do something where we're engaging people and you've created something that when first people hear we're going to do an art project together, everybody says I'm not an artist and you've created something here that's so simple, we're all here, we're all experiencing something at this time, we all have a story to share. And it's so simple, I don't think any of us will ever look at a piece of paper in the same way there. There's so much magic and, and so many different ways and so many wrong folds that, beca that become the magic trick. Um, and so there's just so much potential in this very simple 
but we're all sharing this intention in this time where we're all being impacted. That idea too of the light and the dark, I think we've both experienced both in this incredible time. And so to be able to reflect on both and embrace both at the same time, I think that's a hard thing to do and a hard place to be, but I think we've all just had to do, had to do so. And part of that light is being able to be part of this network where we're really able to reach out and feel like we've really reconnected and connected to one another. So Meliana, thank you for being a part of this and, and leading the way on this project for all of us. Um, I'm thrilled by this and I'm thrilled to see so many, so many familiar and so many new faces and people again who I've, I've heard your names and your reputation. <laughs> um, and so to meet you directly here is incredible and reconnect. Um, what this project will become then is we'll receive everybody's booklet and everybody's stories. And then we're going to create something that is from each of those pieces, we're gonna create something that is uh, something that's created together. And it'll be, so each part is important, but at the same time, it's only a part of the whole. And so it's what we're all creating together. And so really transforming it, taking this in, uh, this time, this, this intention together and transforming it into something together. But every part of that is, is essential. And so we look forward to receiving everybody's parts. Liana and working with you and the work that you're doing, if you wanna um, have some, some ending words that you would like to say? Yeah, I just wanna give you all some email addresses. The first one is the in-between one. And then the second one is my email address. Um, and thank you, we lost, I think uh, Marina had to leave the call, but um, I am now obsessed with Mulivai and not just this concept of fresh water and seawater joining together to be very um, life-giving. You know, we, we don't think of the in-between as life-giving. And I really am going to take that from this workshop is to really look at the in-between in a different way as not just this, like, I was looking at it as a very much like a purgatory, <laughs> like a holding cell or that transitional space at the airport before you go to your destination and you're leaving your other, you know, but now I'm looking at it in a totally different way. And mm -hmm. I, and I encourage you all to think about your own culture and what is the in-between culturally, because Hawaiian culture is very much tied to nature and so we can look at the natural world and see an in-between and it's named Molivai and da 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 and so I'm curious about what are some in-betweens or concepts of that in in all the different cultures you know so I'm now I'm on a hunt <laughs> but thank you for this time and to share space with you all I really appreciate it thank you yes I think we're about Yes, we're right at 529, but if anybody had some last words, last thoughts, um, thank you so much for taking the time and joining us today, everybody. If it's okay, I, I think the only person's voice who, that I haven't heard is, is Kiran's. I would love to just hear your voice, you know, if, if you've got something you'd like to share. Uh, thank you very much for putting this together. It's a delight to join all the way in for Jakarta. It's Saturday for us. I'm probably one of those people who never took an art class since uh, third grade. <laughs> so I, I, this was, it was good for me to, to learn a few things. Um, being, because we're working from home now and with all the Zoom meetings, I've been able to take different, uh, embrace different opportunities. One of it, I've joined the Indonesian Heritage Society mm -hmm. and I'm part of their Batik study group. Mm -hmm. And during my years in Hawaii, I was there for eight years. I also took part in Hawaiian quilting. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking something with um, different kinds of cloth. Yeah. Hawaiian quilting, Indonesian batik. But I'm playing, playing around with a few ideas and seeing how I'll be able to execute it at this point. How exciting. And, you know, I, I actually um, feel very compelled to share that these things are precious that are coming to us. So, you know, I had this crazy idea. Let's just pulp it all and put it all together. I'm having second thoughts. So Annie and Eric and I need to talk. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. So I have to say, you know, if something ends up coming in that's out of fabric, fantastic. It could be a fabric book. 
it could be a carved book, it could be whatever, you know, the, the limits are our imagination. So I think, my goodness, it could be really exciting. Well, I know it's going to be exciting. So just know that, yikes, um, that's a wonderful thing, Kiran, that, that you're sharing, because um, I'm not sure exactly, again, what it, what it may look like in your form, but um, boy, it should be a thrill to, to receive the work and we will take good care of it. Now, now we have to be stewards. So we'll have to think about that as well. But um, just know uh, you have our emails and if you need to get in touch with me, just get in touch to, with Annie and, and you know, we can have conversations about this. We have, Annie, what is our deadline for our, our book? Ours is postmarked by April 1st. Okay, yeah. all right. So, and there's a Google form that you fill in so that we can know what we're, what's coming. <laughs> so it's all part of that Kumu Project uh, web page. Uh, it's April Fool's uh, pop break. <laughs> okay. me. No, it really is. That's really the date. <laughs> oh, and, and one final thing, you know, I hear I'm, I'm talking about COVID, but it's the Kumu Project as in resource, as in teacher, as in um, honoring those things that are the wellspring of us, those things that really matter to us. That's what the project's supposed to focus on. You can throw that COVID stuff in there too and then just paint it out, which is possibly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a painting and a collage and, and get a larger piece of paper, I think. <laughs> I think so that's they, wonderful. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And, just, and just, you know, um, uh, to let you all know, we're open with our what what the project ends up being is going to be based on what we receive so we don't have a vision of what it is before we receive everything we're going to be it's going to be based on what we receive we can't just have this vision without everything coming in ahead of time so yeah. so it's uh, everybody's contribution is going to have some part um in defining what this entire project becomes and so we're all working on it together and we're just we're just getting started we're on the next phase and thrilled to be sharing this with you all and uh for all of your east west center folks that you all know please share the word and help get the word out because the more we have people participating um it's going to be really incredible it's really incredible to connect with you all today so thank you for taking the time a real privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mahalo. Mahalo nui kako. Yeah. All right. Stay in touch. We're just getting started. Aloha. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you. Mahalo. Aloha, everyone. Thanks so much.